This summer, we're in a series. Our summer series is called Best Summer Ever. Doesn't really feel like the best summer ever. Actually, it's been kind of rough. But that's why what we're doing this summer, what we're talking about, is really we're reading what somebody else was talking about. Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians, and we're reading their mail. And Paul wrote this letter while he was under quarantine, while he was under house arrest, while he was in really bad circumstances. Yet, in his letter to the Philippians, he talked about having and how to experience joy and peace and contentment no matter what. How in the world did he survive those circumstances? How in the world did his faith thrive? And how can we learn the same thing? Well, last week in Philippians 2, we talked about what Paul told them about doing nothing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, valuing others. It's all about others. And his key was looking to the interest of others. His his, uh, motivation, his mindset for that, was the mindset of Christ, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And the idea is that if you think like Jesus thought, you'll live like Jesus lived. Jesus thought relentlessly and continuously about loving God, pleasing God, and serving and loving others. Well, this week, Paul gets really practical in how to live that out. Practical could also be feel like meddling at times. It gets very personal. But practical is where this really makes the most difference. Philippians 2, verses 12 and 13, it says this. Therefore, based on what he just said about having the mindset of Christ, of loving others, thinking others, with humility, therefore, because of all that, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, obedience is really important. It's a hard word sometimes for us to hear and think about. But obedience means I'm going to do what God says. And Paul says, I love you guys, Philippians, your dear friends, I love you. Because you don't just do it when I'm around. Like, hey, Paul's coming. Everyone love each other. He goes, you do this when I'm not there. Not only my presence, but now much more in my absence. Then he has this really confusing phrase. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work, Work out your salvation. What does that mean? Well, he doesn't say work for. Paul says it throughout this letter, throughout everything he wrote. It's all about grace. God's, I can't earn what God's done for me. It's a gift that I need to receive, but I cannot earn. It's not work for your salvation. It's work out your salvation. Something is in you that God did for you on the cross. It wasn't something he gave you that you hold. It's something that's inside of you. God's Holy Spirit living in you and through you. And it changes our identity. We're a child of God. And Paul says, that's in you. So live like it. Work it out. Have you ever had toothpaste? Like you're getting close to the end and you want to get the most out of it. And you get really good and clever ways of trying to get all the toothpaste out because you know it's in there. But you got to work it out. Another way to think this would would be live out your salvation with fear and trembling. Like take it seriously. If the God of the universe is living in you and through you and has changed your identity, Live like it. And he says, do that so that you may become blameless and pure. That's who you are, blameless and pure. For it is God who works in you to will and act in accordance, in in order to fulfill his good purpose. Sorry, I, I skipped a phrase there. So God says, I've done something in you. Live it out. But it's God who does it. God who works in you and he does that for his good purpose then he gets really really practical I hope that as we read this you get uncomfortable about something you may have done said posted or whatever I did and I know I hope I'm not alone in this actually I would love to be alone in this but I'm afraid I'm not next verse listen to this do everything everything Without grumbling, that means complaining, or arguing. We got a lot of complaining and arguing in our world right now. And I'm one of the people doing it. I don't like that about myself. I don't like that about our world. And Paul says, well, good. Because that's not how we're supposed to live. 
We're not supposed to grumble or complain or argue. And he says, when you live this way, it's so different. You may become blameless and pure. I I jumped ahead to that phrase earlier. Blameless and pure. That's who you are in Christ. Because he's blameless and pure, and that's credit to us, given to us by grace. So he said, that's how I see you, so live like one of my kids. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. If you live by doing everything without grumbling, complaining, or arguing, you're going to be different. And the thing is, when you choose to live different, and you choose to live this this different way to live, living different makes a difference. I think a lot of us are afraid if I don't put my voice in the conversation, something valuable we lost here. And yeah, that's true. true. Sometimes you have to speak up to speak about what's true. But if you do it in a way that's grumbling, complaining, or arguing, we're not going to stand out. We're going to blend in and eventually be tuned out. Do everything, everything, without complaining or arguing. And when you live different, it makes a difference. And this is the kind of difference it makes. This is the imagery he gives. And I love this imagery. I want you to think about it in in several different ways. Next verse, verse 16 or 15 and 16. Then when you live that way, no complaining or arguing, choosing to live different, you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. What are you holding firmly to? A Facebook post? A political ideal? A family value? Like, like what is the thing you hold to more than anything? And a lot of those things are good. But if you're not guided by God's truth, we're on slippery footing. God says, use this as your filter for what you think. He says that in Philippians 4, 8. How you speak to others. Hold firmly to the word of life. To Jesus. And to his truth. Because when you live that way and you live it out, this is the result you will shine among them like stars. Not like a Hollywood star. Like a star in the sky. And I I said it last week, I I love looking at stars at night. It's just something about it. And the blackness of the sky and the pop of the star offered, offered, it stands out. It stands out. He says, I want you to shine like a star. I want you to shine a light. I want you to be different. And here's what I know about light and stars for light to make a difference it has to be sufficiently powered and strategically placed let me explain what i mean so i have this flashlight this flashlight uh helps me kind of navigate my way around at at night the lights go out in our house uh you know the power goes out all of a sudden i can use this to get around if oh may this never be true if i'm camping and I'm out camping at night. I've got this to kind of get around. I don't want to go camping. But the thing I know about a light, whether it be a flashlight, porch light, a bicycle light, Christmas lights, the lights in your house, for lights to work, they got to have power. When I first got this flashlight, I tried to turn it on, and it didn't work. It didn't have batteries. It wasn't sufficiently powered. And for lights to work, it has to be strategically placed. For whatever reason, a lot of times when I was a kid, when I'd be, and I did go camping as a kid, and we'd be out camping, and somebody would walk up, I would take my light and shine it right in their eyes. That's not strategically placed. <laughs> That's irritating. But when I'm walking and I might stumble over something and it's down at my feet, that's strategically placed. When there's a place you want to have it be very secure, a light outside is strategically placed. If there's a dark corner of your house and you want to read, a light strategically placed that shines over your shoulder really helps you. Light has to be sufficiently powered and strategically placed. And if you're going to shine like a star, you have to be sufficiently powered and strategically placed. Listen to the words of Jesus, John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Then catch this, it's a big promise. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but they will have the light of life listen sufficiently powered 
Jesus was empowered sufficiently because he was God with us. And strategically placed, he stepped into human skin. He stepped into human history. He stepped into the world. And he stepped onto a cross, strategically placed as a person on a cross. And that makes all the difference. Jesus was sufficiently powered and strategically placed. And then there's this promise that if I follow him, if you follow him, we have the light of life. So Matthew 4, 5, 14, and 16, Jesus tells us, he goes, I'm the light of the world. Here he says, you're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. And you need to be sufficiently powered and you need to be strategically placed. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds, see what you do, see what you say, see how you treat people, see how you love people, see how you're others focused, see how you le- seek to love God and love people above all else. They will see your good deeds and that will draw attention, glorify your Father in heaven. You are sufficiently powered because if you're following Jesus, he's not just somewhere down the path and you're following him. Christ is in you. Paul said that's his hope. It's Christ in us. God living his life in you and through you, you're sufficiently powered. You have everything you need to follow Jesus and live out as a light you're strategically placed god has you where you are for a reason and right now people need to see people who are others focused who love god and love people well for light to make a difference it has to be sufficiently powered and strategically placed are you relying on the power of jesus the life of jesus your identity as a child of god to be the thing that allows you to serve as a light, to shine as a, dark scar, a bright star in a dark sky. Jesus has the power to let his light shine in you and through you. Work it out. Live that out. Live like it's true. And then you've been strategically placed to shed light on who God is. And honestly, what our world needs right now aren't solutions and answers. Those would be nice. What our world needs is Jesus. Can people see Christ in you? Sometimes it means we have to get out of the way. Where right now are you placed where God wants you to be a light? Think about that. Is it your family? Work? Online? Is what you're doing shedding a light on who God is that they, people can see him clearer? Are you strategically placed? Where might be God trying to lead you in a new place? where he wants your light to shine, to help you step out of your comfort zone, step into a new place where he wants to shine light. Because the truth is, if you want to live as a light of the world, Jesus said, you're the light of the world. If you want to live that way, if you want to live as a light of the world, you need to live like the light of the world and as if the light of the world is in you. Take on that identity. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Live like it. And live like it's true when he says, Christ is in you. You are in Christ. You are sufficiently powered and strategically placed. Well, let's look back at this verse in Philippians. Painfully practical. You're going to know with every word, with every interaction, with every post, if you use this filter, if you're doing this or not. Do everything. Nothing's excluded. Without grumbling means complaining or arguing. very practical do everything that way and then he says this line about children of god without fault in a warped and crooked generation that's actually a reference to the old testament when i first read that i thought that meant if i live like a light of the world and i shine like a star in the sky compared to that i thought i was talking about the world people who aren't following jesus Well, in Deuteronomy 32, Moses was talking to the Israelites. God had this people, this group, that he wanted to be his people to serve as a light to the world that would draw others to God because they followed him so well. They didn't do such a good job at being a light to the world. 
he was talking to people who were followers of God, but not doing it well. He was talking to people who had a distorted, warped view. They were crooked. They were off path of following Jesus. Can I just challenge you to be someone this week that says, I will not argue. I will not complain. I will love others. So that light can shine a light on who God is. See, we, God, here's the great news. If you've been one of those people that's grumbling or arguing, if you're someone who at times was a follower of Jesus but hasn't done it well, God had a heart for this generation. He loved them. They kept messing up and he kept bringing them back and they kept messing up and he kept bringing them back. That gives me hope because at times I get it wrong and God has a heart for people who stumble and fall. Because the light of the world, the God of the universe, strategically placed himself on earth, on a cross, to die a painful and personal death for you to pay the penalty of your sin. So you don't have to work out, excuse me, work for salvation of getting right with God. He's done the work for you. He's offered his gift and his life to you. And when you receive it, it changes your identity. He paid for your life at the cross. The life I live is no longer mine. It belongs to him. So if he says, do everything without grumbling or arguing, I'm going to do it. And if he says, by doing that, I'll shine among them like stars, it's not my job to try and be a star, to try and be a light. My job is to let the light of the world shine through me by living different. And it'll, living different makes a difference. So live it out. If you're a follower of Jesus, live that out. Let him be the leader of what you say, what you do, what you post, how you behave, all of it. It's all his. And I want to give you a very practical assignment. Um, this week, when it gets dark, I want you to go outside sometime. It could be tonight if the clouds aren't there. Do it on a night when you can see the stars. I actually have an app on my phone that tells me when conditions are good to look at the stars. But you can just look at the weather, and if there's not clouds outside, go outside and get away from light. Like if you have porch lights or street lights, try and turn them off as much as you can or get away from them. And go outside and bring a flashlight and a Bible or bring an app on a phone that allows you to read the Bible and turn off the lights for a minute. And let it get dark. And as you do that, just kind of look at the stars, the light popping off the darkness. Sit there for a minute and look at it, and then open your Bible or pull up on your device to Philippians 2, turn on that light and read that passage. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. So you may be blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky if you hold firmly to the word of life. This week, just go outside and then look at the stars, read that passage, and then turn off the lights and just look at the stars and think again. And if you're with others, maybe as a family, talk about that. What does it look like to do everything without complaining or arguing? What does it mean that he wants to shine like the stars? And just have a conversation about that. Read and reflect on this passage. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, but every week we write sermon questions for discussion or reflection for every week. Sometimes small groups use them when they're meeting, but you could use that for personal reflection or discussion um, on this passage. But tonight, or the first night it's dark where you can see the skies, go outside, look at the stars. And Paul said, when I see the darkness of the sky but a star popping off of it, that's what I want for you, to shed light on God in a very dark time in our world. And as you speak, as you post, as you talk to people, as you talk about people, do it with everything without grumbling or arguing. And when you live different, it will make a difference. Let's pray.
God, help us to shine like stars. We can only do that if we're sufficiently powered and we need you to live your life in us and through us. And we trust you wherever you've placed us, that you've placed us strategically to make a difference. Help us to live that out and live like it's true, that the light of the world is in us and wants to shine through us. Amen. Hey, next week, we're going to be online only. And I know a lot of you are disappointed because you'd like to meet in person. Well, so would we. Uh, We're going to be online only next week. And we're going week by week, and we're really thinking and praying about it. But here's why we're online only next week. And it'll be just like this week at 9.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. And here's why we did that. We actually sent out a survey. If you haven't done it, you can still find it on the Live Oak uh, website or app under signups and events. We've listened to you. We've made calls. Some of our friends who work in the hospital system as administrators, doctors, nurses, people in education, we're trying to listen. But one of the things we listened to the most was what you said on the survey. Some of you said that right now, because of, for whatever reason, either uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, there's some reason, uh, an employer, you can't come back yet. So we take the online service very seriously. Some of you said, I can only come back I'm willing to come back, but everyone's got to be wearing a mask. And we hear you. And we're praying about what, what do we do with that? And we've heard some of you that said, as mean as you said, everyone wearing a mask, I'm out. We hear you. We hear that you don't trust some of that, or you're not sure about that, or it makes you feel uncomfortable or claustrophobic. Lots of different re- reasons we're hearing that. One of the big takeaways from this is to provide a service that feels like Live Oak is going to leave some of Live Oak out, a large chunk, no matter what we do. We also know that if we don't have volunteers for service in the main service or in kids' ministry, we can't do what we do. So we're navigating it. We're listening to feedback. We're trying to care about our friends right now who, and some, some, several of our friends have gone through COVID, and it was really rough on them. Some of our people are unsure about the future. Some people are very firm in their beliefs. We're trying to listen to everybody and lead Live Oak well, but the number one voice we listen to is we're listening prayerfully to how God wants to lead us through this. So next week, we're going to be online at at 9.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. And if you attend the 8.30 p.m. again, there's some opportunities there. You can put kids down or it's a little bit different vibe. Um, We're encouraging some watch parties to get some people together to watch it together. Now, what we would ask you to do is pay attention to the guidelines uh, that exist for safety reasons because we don't want a Live Oak gathering of any kind to be the reason that somebody gets compromised. But these online gatherings, these watch parties can happen online or in person. So as you consider hosting a watch party on Facebook, getting a small group of people to watch, especially if you have an outdoor back patio with a TV or something like that, re-watching it in a park, something like that. There are some opportunities here. Live Oak is best when we think about the other and when we try to focus on being together. That's a really hard thing to do right now. It's exhausting trying to figure out. So we ask for your prayers. We ask for your patience. We ask for your participation because we want to do this well. You matter to God and you matter to us. And this week, I just want to challenge you again. Keep engaging with others. Keep engaging online. And do what Paul said. Do everything without arguing or complaining. Live out your faith in a way that sheds light on who God is, points others to him.